All right, this is the back page of the additional practice to prepare us for the CFA Learning Target 6.2. Remember, the empirical formula is the lowest ratio. So if I have C6H6, that common denominator is 6. The lowest ratio is 1 to 1, so it's going to just be CH. And remember, when the subscript is 1, we don't write it. Now for number 2, we have C8H18. The, common, the lowest common denominator is actually 2. So I'm just going to divide them each by 2, and I'm going to get C4H9. I can't simplify it anymore. That's the empirical formula for octane. Octane is C8H18. Um, uh, tungsten, tungsten oxide here we have is there there is nothing that's more simplified so actually the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same for tungsten oxide tungsten 2 oxide all right so here we have C2H6O2 they're all even so I know that I can divide them all by 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 I don't write that 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Again, when it's 1, it's an understood 1. So those are the empirical formulas. It's just simplifying, kind of like simplifying fractions. All right, so here we have a sample of indium chloride that weighs 0 0.5000 grams, and it contains 0 0.2404 grams of chlorine. Okay, so what is the empirical formula? Well, so first of all, to know how much indium it contains, I have to figure out, I have to subtract. So 0 0.500 divided, or sorry, not divided by, 0 0.500 minus 0 0.2404, I know that I have 0.2596 grams of indium. And so indium is that one we've talked a lot about. It is element number 49. It has a molar mass of 114.82. So remember, when we're finding the empirical formula, the first thing we need to do is um, figure out how many moles of each that we have. So for indium, I know I have 0.2596 grams of indium. And I'll put, there we go, so it doesn't look like an L. Indium on the periodic table has a molar mass of 114.82. 114.82 grams per mole of indium. And that grams divides out. So that will tell me how many moles of indium I have in this substance. I have 0 0.2404 grams of chlorine. Chlorine we know is a halogen. Its molar mass is 35.45. That's how many grams are in a mole of chlorine. So I will divide these. I get 0.2596 divided by 114.82. Uh, again, that means I my moles in that this is not a very big substance. I only have point zero zero two two six, um, and I since there's four significant figures, I will round that zero nine to a one moles of indium. And then for chlorine, I have. 0 0.2404 divided by my molar mass of chlorine and I have 0 0.006781 again four significant figures moles of chlorine. Now which of these is smaller? The 0 0.00261 is smaller so I divide these each by the smaller number. 
since I've just done this, I'm going to divide this by 0.002261. And I get approximately, 2.9999 is approximately 3 moles of chlorine. And I know this is going to be 1 mole of indium. So 1 mole of indium means my subscript for indium is a 1, which I don't need to put. My subscript for chlorine is 3. So this would be indium. Clearly would have a 3. This would be indium 3 chloride. And that's at least the empirical formula. It's probably the it's probably that ionic compound, indium trichloride, or indium three chloride. Um, here it says I have an unknown compound as 47% potassium. So the first thing I know is I'm going to say 47 grams of potassium as 14.5 percent carbon. I'm going to change that to grams, assuming I have a hundred grams of substance, and then 38.5 grams of oxygen. Potassium we know is a alkali metal, group one, 39.1 grams per mole. So one mole of potassium is 39.1 grams. 47 divided by 39.1 means I have approximately, let's see, I have three significant figures, so I'm just going to say 1.20 moles of potassium, since I only have three significant figures. The carbon we know is 12.01. I'm just going to leave three significant figures, 14.5 divided by 12 is 1.20, 1.21 moles of carbon. And then oxygen we know is 16 grams per mole. 38.5 divided by 16 is about 2.41. I'm just doing three significant figures. The smallest number is 1.2. When I divide these by 1.2, I get one mole of potassium. I get one mole of carbon. And I get two moles of oxygen. So my ratio is 1 to 1 to 2. So it's potassium, one carbon, and two oxygens. That is my empirical formula for this compound. Now it says, if the true molar mass is 166.22, what is its molecular formula? Well, let's do that. We have one potassium would be 39.1. Uh, one carbon, we know it's, we can do 12.01 and 16.0. I add those together. Um, 39.1 plus 12.01 plus 16, I get 67.11. And so I'm just going to divide this right here. What happens when I divide that? 166.22 divided by 67.11, I get Oh, I made a mistake, didn't I? Did you catch that? There's two oxygens. That's why it doesn't work. I have to add another 16 to this. 60, silly me, 67.11 plus 16 is 83.11. Now, I'm going to get a lot better answer, aren't I? So sometimes when you're working, some of the when you say, does that answer make sense, you can actually realize that you made a mistake. And that's what we learn a lot from making mistakes, don't we? I can actually see that 83 times 2 is 166.22. So this means that it's 2. So I need to take the subscripts and multiply them by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So. It says, now, last one, determine the molecular form, 
the molecular formula for each compound. If I know my empirical formula is NO2 and my mass is this, the first thing I do is I know nitrogen is 14. In fact, it's 14.01. Two oxygens is 32. <laughs> I know, my, now I know my mistake. So it's 46.01 for one empirical formula. I take my molar mass that's given and I'm dividing that and I get two. 92 divided by 46, I know is two. So I'm going to just multiply each of these subscripts by two. One times two is two. Two times two is four. So that is my molecular formula if the molar mass is 92.02. Ibuprofen, which some people use for headaches, has an empirical formula of C7H9O. So let's see what that is. Seven times 12. <coughs> seven, seven times 12 is 84. It says nine times hydrogen we know is one approximately. And I, because I see this is 218 and it doesn't have any decimal places, I'm just rounding these to the nearest whole number. And then I only have one oxygen. So 84 plus 9 plus 16 is 109. So 218 divided by 109 is 2. And I did do that in my head. That means I have to multiply each of these by 2. 7 times 2 is 14. 9 times 2 is 18. And again, that understood 1 times 2 is 2. So there's my empirical formula, or my molecular formula for ibuprofen.